What's good guys and welcome to the Syntho YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you the top five bass sounds in dance music. So whether you're into jungle, house, disco or garage, by the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to make each of these bass sounds and how to implement them into your project. Let's get stuck in. Syntho. For our first sound, we're gonna be looking at a classic 90s house organ. These are instantly recognizable on the dance floor and you can make them using only Ableton stock plugins. Here's what we've got. So here I have a nice classic house organ bass line. Here's the MIDI notes we've got for this. Really, really cool and simple. As you can see here, I'm in the key of F but we're going up an octave. Going up an octave with an organ bass line just sounds really nice. And it's a great little trick to add a little bit of flair to your bass lines. What's great about this sound is it's actually an Ableton preset made in Wavetable. You have some great macro controls to really control the tone of this. So you can really get this nice and tuned within your project. This is based off the M1 house organ and it was used in records like Show Me Love and Gypsy Woman. To create this style of bass line, you need a much more plucked sound. So you want to choose your chord progression, which is an F, a G sharp, and an A sharp. But in order to get that really classic house sound, you need to be making sure it's nice and percussive. So really hit those notes. When you set the Ableton grid to 16th notes, generally speaking, you want to have two 16th notes between each note. This is a nice, easy way to make sure you've got the right amount of space between each note. Once you've got your bass line sorted, it's important to get your drums right. So a nice, simple hat and clap pattern to go with a classic house sound. Once you follow these steps, you'll be well on your way to making a classic house anthem. Next up, we've got a modern tech house bass line. So we're gonna be using a nice warm sub for this. For this bass line, I've used a simple three note pattern, nice longer extended notes. And that warm fat sub really hits when you're in a club. To make this sound, you want to start with a buzzy oscillator tone filled with warm harmonics. Here I've used a saw wave and then a square wave combined in Ableton's analog. Also then add a little bit of white noise for some color and tone. Once you've got that fatter sound, then head over to the filter section, make sure the envelope is turned all the way off and then filter out all of the harsh buzzy frequencies. You wanna put this to around 200 Hertz and you'll have a nice warm subtone. You need to make sure you're playing this in a low octave in order to have that deep sub tone. This will be very quiet however, so it's time to add some saturation for a bit of loudness and fatness. Finally, make sure your bass line is side chained to your kick and you'll have a nice thumping bass line. On the bass line itself, you'll see I've got this long extended note and then these shorter, more percussive hits afterwards. The contrast of the shorter and longer notes creates a really nice bass line and it gives it that very techy feel. Combine it with some chunky house drums and you'll be a step closer to a tech house slammer. Next up is an old school 80s disco style with some more realistic drum and bass line sounds. Let's have a listen to what we've got. So here we have our bass line. And I'm using the Ample Bass P Light plugin. This is a free plugin that anyone can access and it's a great way to catch a more realistic bass sound without buying a bass guitar. If you wanna download this, check the link in the description so you can get your copy. Because it's a more old school sound, you really want that realistic bass tone. And this even gives you the sound of moving up and down the frets as if someone was really playing it. From here, I've EQ'd some of the low end out very gently curving it off so it's not too subby in the low end. When we're looking at the bass line itself, the key for the disco style is having lots of space in the bass line. You'll see I've got this bass hit and then a big space before I start playing my next few notes. In the first half of the bass line, I stay close to the root note, only going down two semitones. Again, leaving plenty of space in the bass line, we then finish it off by going up the scale. 
In the first half, we stay close to the root note to keep it extra groovy. For then the second half, we start to walk up the scale to then resolve this bass line. For an extra bit of variation on the fourth bar, rather than walking up the scale, then walk back down again, back to the root note. So we'll press the duplicate button to duplicate this entire section. Then we'll select the last few notes, and then we're gonna press the invert button, which means rather than going up, we're gonna be walking down. Combine that with an acoustic sounding kick, plus some congas and some cowbells, and you'll have some old school sounding disco. Next up, we have the iconic Acid House sound. Whilst this is typically used with the 303, if you don't have the plugin or the hardware for this, you can easily make it with an Ableton. So this Acid Bassline sound came from an Ableton preset patch, but I've just tweaked it slightly to make it a more old school sound. I've gone into the filter section and I've turned the envelope right the way down to about 37%. I've also then made sure that the velocity and the frequency is not being affected. So make sure that's on 0% as well. Then pull the frequency all the way down. Make sure that resonance is really high. And you've got that nice acid pluck tone. You can even automate the cutoff frequency to give your sound more variety and movement. The bass line itself is made of lots of short little notes with plenty of overlapping notes to create glide and movement within the bass line. If you want to make a really cool sounding acid bass line, there's a free Max for Live plugin called Sting by Skinnerbox. It's an acid pattern generator and you can easily create them and control them to create the bass line you need right for your track. You can add swing, transpose it, or even generate a brand new random pattern just by pressing the acid smiley face. To make sure that everything's in key, after the sting, make sure you add an Ableton scale MIDI effect. This will make sure that any wrong or dissonant notes will be changed to the right scale and key of your track. One thing to note is that Sting will reset every time you reopen it, so it's really important to capture the MIDI once you've got a nice sounding bass line. To do this, create a new MIDI channel, head down to the MIDI from section and change it from all ins to the channel we have Sting on. In this case, it's number 15 from the Acid Bass. Then arm the brand new MIDI track and press record. <laughs> Now drag it onto the original channel and then you can just turn off Sting and you have your acid bass line. If you want to grab a free copy of Sting, then make sure you check out the description below. Finally, we have our heavy garage or jungle bass line, playing off what would commonly be called a Reese bass. Let's have a listen to what we've got. To make the Reese bass sound, it's really easy and you can use it using Ableton stock plugins. Here I'm using Ableton's operator and it's really simple to set up. All you need to do is change the wave shape on the first oscillator to a saw wave. And the same again on the second oscillator. You want to pull the course down to 0.5 on both of those oscillators. You want to pull the level down to minus 12 dB on the first oscillator and put the levels up to minus 16 dB on the second oscillator. To create that really classic Reese bass sound, you want to change the fine tuning and give it a detune. The more you do, the more detuned the bass will be. The sweet spot for this is about 30, I find. And there you have a nice detuned Reese bass. And of course, open and close this to taste, but it sounds really nice when you've got that cutoff frequency nice and low. Then for a bit more movement on the sound, turn on the LFO and have a nice low rate with a small amount, about 9% and about seven to eight on the rate. This just adds a touch of movement. You can hear it just gives it that slight wobble and movement in the sound. The final thing to then tweak is going over to the voices and changing it from eight to one, making it a monosynth and then heading over to the pitch section and turning on glide. 
This means that any notes will be overlapping, will naturally glide in and give it that really nice bendy re-space sound. Now that the patch is sorted, it's good to just fatten it up with a bit of drum bus, some compression, and then the saturator for a bit of beefy warm harmonics. Just make sure you're side chaining it to the kick so there's no clashing frequencies between your bass line and your kick drum. For this garagey, jungly bass line, you really want to have these really long extended notes. I then created this effect by having a few short notes in a much higher octave. I'm going about two octaves higher for this, so it really gives a nice contrast between the two notes. Whilst I'm only using two notes for this bass line, you can actually play a re-space with a progression and it sounds really, really nice. Combine that with some short percussive drums with plenty of swing and a nice breaky kick and you've got some really nice garage sounds. So hopefully now after watching this video, you'll be able to make any of these bass sounds to put in your projects without spending any money on expensive plugins. If you're ready to level up your music game, then it's time to go check out the Syntho app. Syntho.